Thank you for clicking on the video. I'm jumping around in this book if you've been following me. <clears throat> I'm not doing this in order, basically because of material availability. Uh, this is going to be a bowl with 20, I believe it's 20 segments. Yes, 20, 20 segments. I've done some segmented bowls already. But she made this one a little more colorful. I don't have the same material. She used purple heart and yellow heart. So I'm using up a bunch of the quarter inch I've got on hand. That's the Bubinga and Ash. So it's the same procedure I've done in the others. I'm going to put these together with some tape temporarily. Tape and super glue. She used double sided tape, but I don't have any. So this works fine, tape and super glue. And then I got this pattern. So I've got to, uh, have to print that out. Scan it and print it out, 125% uh, she says on that one. So, and then I'll cut that in half and be two sections to cut those 10 segments out of each one. Then we'll start gluing those together to make up a blank. But first I gotta stick these together. I gotta get the pattern ready to put on them. Okay, I got those two pieces temporarily stuck together. <clears throat> and got the uh, pattern cut in half for each piece. I'm going to number these 1 through 20. Then I'm going to go over and cut the semicircle part out on the saw. I've got to get me a fresh blade in. I'm going to use a, a number five for that probably. So I'll start, I'll number these and cut them, and then we'll see. I think the next step will be to cut the uh, individual segments out, but I'll double check that. I'm just kind of looking at one step at a time here. Well, I got the semicircles cut out. Now I'm going to cut each of these segments and I'm going to number each piece and keep them together as I go. Okay, they're all cut out. I've removed the patterns and the tape in between. I've numbered the matching pieces that were cut together. So now I'm going to go through and alternate those, switch every other one out on both sides, and we'll make four half circles. And I'm going to start gluing those together. That's going to be a fairly long process, so I'm gonna, I've got to get started on it.
Okay, I got the four semicircles glued together. Looking pretty good. I lap them a little bit just like I do the uh, rings. I have that tile, nice flat tile, with a piece of sandpaper, and I, I lap them just a little bit because sometimes they won't get a little bit of a wobble. Like for some reason they want to get a little long or thick in the middle there. But I lap them a little bit to make them fit really nicely. So now I'm going to glue these one at a time and make the two blanks, and they have to be glued together. Uh, between those steps, I'll sand everything because wood's not uniform. It's a little thicker in some places than others. It's not much. I glued it together nice and flat, but there's a slight difference in the thicknesses, so I'm going to sand all that down smooth before I glue it together. But right now, this is the next step, is to make these full circles out of these four pieces. Full circles. Okay, I've got the two circles made. I've only sanded the sides that I'm going to glue together. So I'm going to glue these together, put them in the bowl press, and I've got to get these segments half off. I've got to match the segments. I've marked these on the opposite sides, so I'll make sure I get them right. So I've got, the, got them lined out where they're supposed to be to get the numbers together. So that's the next step. I'm going to glue these together and put them in the bowl press. Okay, so those glued together nicely. I've sanded everything nice and smooth. Some of these rings, these, the bingo seemed to be slightly larger in some areas than the ash, so I had to sand that down, wanted it all be level. So then I drew me, uh, I put tape on it and drew me some lines and guidelines, and so I could put this pattern on, make sure I got it centered. I wanted to get, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I want it really close. And so I think I do have it. Uh, there are five rings, and they're a quarter inch each. And they're all cut at the same angle. So it's not going to be any, I'll cut it 28 degrees. I'm going to cut the first one, or cut the outside, then i cut the next one. Then I'll see if they match up fine, if I need to adjust the angle. Uh, I've had that happen two or three times before. Uh, have to change the angle by one or two degrees to get everything to match up properly. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a new blade in the saw. I'm going to cut this with a number five. Because the number five will go through the 60 uh, drill bit hole that I have. And it's not real thick wood, so I don't think I'll have any trouble with the blade flexing, the uh, bit flexing in the hole. Uh, so let me get it over the saw. We'll cut that outer one, get that first ring cut off, and see if it matches. All right, got the table set at 28. Got a new blade, it's a five, number five, like I said. And I'm gonna cut this outer one. Then I have to go over to, I'm gonna use that edge as a guide for my drill press table. And drill a, right there, drill a, a entry hole at that same angle. And we're gonna operate at 28 degrees all the way through, which makes this a fairly simple bowl. It don't, it's not complex as far as changing angles. So I thought the whole pony trick to this one is the segments being staggered and then you stagger them around to give a pattern on the side of the bowl. Uh, and I'm, this is not going to be as colorful as hers because I don't have the same colors, but I'm going to try to replicate her pattern. So here we go, I'm going to cut this outer part.
Yeah, that ring matched up almost perfectly. It continues that way all the way through, and it should. As long as I can cut accurately, it'll be a very easy bowl to sand, both inside and out. Hopefully it'll stay that way and make a nice looking bowl. Then here we go, and we'll start cutting off these rings one at a time. And I've got four more to go. Okay, so now we're getting the last ring. We're almost to the point of gluing rings together. Got to match them up and all. So getting real close to on the home stretch on this bowl, actually. But uh, the only problem I've had so far is the real bit flexed in two of the holes. That babinga is pretty dense. Uh, even the ash is dense, but when the blade, the, the bit hits a different uh, density, it wants to move a little bit because it's a very small blade. Uh, bit. Anyway, it's and in one of them I came into the, the the drill hole a little bit off, which leaves me some stuff to have to sand off, but I've cleaned up worse than that. So we cut this last one, and then I'll match up the rings and glue them, and we'll, we'll start the sanding process. Okay, rings are cut out. Now I'm going to remove these patterns. Uh, Check for spacing between these, make sure there's no gaps. You may sand them all just a little bit anyway, but I'll have to check each uh, matchup individually. And then I'm going to glue them together. And that's basically where we are from there. It's just a normal procedure of gluing and sanding. Straight sided bowl, it'll be a little easier to sand. I don't have any mismatch. Drill holes aren't too bad. So this should be fairly easy to finish. Now for the bottom, for the base, she says to cut a plug out of that because you don't, they don't match up well in the center. She said a half inch plug and then cut a plug of one of these uh, to fit that and insert that. We'll see when we get there. I'm going to do something. I'm not sure exactly if it's going to be a half inch plug or what I'm going to do. But for now, I'm going to start stacking these rings, getting them lined up and getting them glued together. Okay, I got it glued together. It's matching up pretty nicely. I like the way it's looking. So it's a straight-sided bowl. I'm going to use my little sanding drum, drill mounted, drill press mounted sanding drum, and uh, sand it down. The drill marks aren't too bad. I think this is going to be fairly easy, and it's going to look pretty good, I think, when I get through. So let me get that mounted up, and I'll get started on it. Okay, I got the inside sanded three different grits. It, a little more sanding than I anticipated, but it's still sanded out real nice. Uh, what I've done now is I've taken the, the base that this is cut off of. I drilled a half inch hole in it and I cut me a piece. That's actually a piece of uh, oak, white oak. And I cut it, tapered it a little bit and drove it in as far as it'd go with some glue and sanded it off. I sanded it off real smooth and I've matched it up pretty much with the bottom of the bowl. 
and I'm going to glue that on now. I'm going to put it in the press and glue it. I may leave it overnight because it's getting very late in the day here. But uh, make sure I get that as centered as well as I can. But it's going to line up very nicely. And then I'll sand the outside of it. Probably use the flexible pad sander on that. The uh, straight sander, straight drum worked really well. In fact, I might even go to the belt sander. I'll see when I get it on. Start over in the morning and see what I think about it and how I feel about it. Let me get this glued on and then we'll let it sit and think about the next step. Okay, I got in early this morning, took it out of the press, everything looked good. I sanded it on the uh, belt sander. I uh, also finished blocking, uh, plugging that bottom. I didn't have that plugged in all the way through, so I cut another one, tapered it, put it in there, sanded it down where it's nice and smooth. I kind of like the way it, it turned out. And then I came around with my inflatable ball sander and rounded that off all the way around. Kind of put a little finish lip on it. So now I'm going to put a, a finish on it. And uh, I wet it down, raised the grain, and re-sanded it. It looks real nice when you get that finish on there. I think it will. That water kind of shows you what that dark wood's going. It contrasts, has contrast against that ash. That's ash and bubinga. So let me get my uh, finish lined out, and I'll get that on there. And the next time you see it, it'll have at least one coat of finish on it. And we may call it good for this video, but we'll see... Uh, you might need another one depending on how it looks, but we'll start with one to see how it turns out. Well, there it is. That's one good coat of finish. I'm going to sand it and put some more on it, but it's good enough to call an end of this video. Cause it'll be several days finishing this up the way I want it. Get a little depth to that finish. Uh, but the purpose of this bowl was to replicate the pattern. Uh, that she had on her bowl. Mine's not near as colorful as hers. If you don't have the book, this is what her bowl looks like. She used yellow heart and red heart. A purple heart, I'm sorry. Yellow heart and purple heart, which I didn't have. And for me, those those woods look real nice when you start out, but they kind of exposure to light. They don't keep that color. So this was the best contrast I had. Bubinga and Aspen in quarter inch. And uh, I think it turned out nice. So the pattern is what I was really after. Uh, if I had the purple heart and the yellow heart, I would have done it just to get the effect. But I didn't have that on hand, not in this size. So that's the end of this video. Uh, so the bowl making for this week. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, hope you like it. If you do, hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, um, next week, if the material comes in, I'm going to actually make a vase. I've got some cherry and some mahogany coming. They should be here in time. If not, I'll have to scramble and find something else. But uh, that's the plan right now is to do a vase next week. And I uh, hope, hope you join me for that one. Because a vase is basically inverted bowls. It's very similar to bowl making. But anyway, that's, that's it for this week. I hope you like it. And I hope to see you in the next video.